When we first started talking about area and how to calculate area, what we did is we added up a bunch of small rectangles. In fact, we started adding up an infinite number of rectangles. We let the width of those rectangles go to zero, and we got the area was equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So, if we're going to now talk about volume, instead of adding up little rectangles, what we're going to do is add up little slices of area. So let's look at this. If I have a cylinder, and I know the cylinder volume is V equals H times pi R squared, but let's see if we could come up with this thinking about things in terms of calculus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cylinder of height H with the radius R, and I'm going to think of it as an infinite number of stacked circles. And each of those circles has a sectional cross area of pi r squared. So if I add up this infinite number of circles with height h, the volume is going to be h times that cross-sectional area, or pi r squared. So this is what we're going to do when we first start thinking about determining volumes by slicing. We're going to use this general formula. The volume is equal to, well, I'll say this once and we won't talk about it again, but it's really the limit is n, that is the number of cross-sectional areas, as that number goes to infinity of the summation from 1 to n of those cross-sectional areas times delta x, and that equals the definite integral from a to b of the cross-sectional area a of x dx. So this slicing method, what are the steps? Step one is we have to figure out that cross-sectional shape that we're going to talk about of the solid. Once we figure out the shape, we're going to determine the formula of that shape, of that area, of that cross-section. And then lastly, we're going to integrate. What we've been doing, or what we will be doing, is using generally that cross-sectional area being perpendicular to the x-axis, and that makes it easy to integrate in terms of dx. You could, of course, make that perpendicular to the y-axis, and then we'd use dy, but for the most part, we're going to be sticking with dx. So let's do this example. It's a square-based Pyramid. And the reason why we're picking this is one that we already know the volume of. So each cross section is a square. So that's step one. We figured out the shape of the cross sectional area. However, unlike the case of the cylinder, the shape of the square is changing depending where we are in the pyramid. So step two is going to be to determine that formula. So how do we determine the formula? Well, I know the area of a square is just s squared, where s is the side of the square. The trouble is we don't know what s is. If we think about this pyramid, but we look at it from the side view, we see that we have two similar triangles. We have the triangle that goes all the way to x, and the width of that square is s. We also know when we let x go all the way to h, then that side of the square is a. That's given to us. That's the base of the pyramid. So these are similar triangles. That means proportions are the same. So if I compare s and a, that is the two bases of the pyramid, and if I compare x and h, that is the height of that pyramid, then I see that s over a equals x over h, and if I solve for s, I get that s is equal to a x over h. Therefore, the cross-sectional area, which I know is s squared, is simply a x over h all squared. Our last step is now to integrate. This is usually the easiest part of this process. So I take the volume going from 0 to h, the height of our final pyramid, of a x dx, but I know ax is ax over h all squared, and I go ahead and do that integration, and I find out that the volume of a square-based pyramid is a squared h over 3, which is our known formula. So again, it's nice to do an example where you already know the answer.